No matter their religious or philosophical orientation, people are fascinated by fate. I am unlucky because something happened to me, or I am cursed because something continues to happen to me, or I'm fortunate because something good happened to me. We want to know what's behind it and why it happened, and we often assign some kind of personal agency to the things that happened to us. This is not untrue in Old Norse myth, where there are three beings, three female beings called the Norns, who determine fate, not only the fate of the cosmos on a grand scale, but also the fate of all the individuals, whether human, dwarf, or god. These three Norns are known as Urdur, Verlandi, and Skuld. And I have discussed in another video that I'll link in a card in the top right, as well as in the end screen, uh, in some depth what the role of these beings are, so I won't talk too much about that here. But one thing that I've been asked about uh, quite a bit is the meaning of their names. Now, of course, part of why people look for meaning in the names and, and look for some significance there is that there just actually isn't that much written about the Norns in our main sources of Norse myth, the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, and certain mythical heroic sagas. And so anything that we can glean out of the information we do have, like their names, assumes an extra importance. Unfortunately, the names of the Norns are often misrepresented, or the meanings of the names of the Norns are often misrepresented in popular uh, websites and books that talk about Norse mythology. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about what these names mean. First of all, there is a verb, verda, in Old Norse that means to become or to happen. And Verdandi, the name of one of the Norns, is very simply the form of this verb that is equivalent to an English verb that ends in ing, right? This is a present participle. So if you think about an English verb uh, that ends in ing, when you say, I am seeing, you are singing, she is leaving, that kind of thing, that ing form, that is equivalent to the andi ending in Old Norse. So verdandi is simply becoming, happening. Urdur is formed to the same root as verda. Now, when I say root, I mean something a little bit different from word. Think about an English word like sing, but then there's another word like sang, and another sung, and another song. These are all formed to the same root, meaning to sing, but one means present tense, sing, one means past tense, sang, one means past participle, sung, and one means noun, uh, something that is sung. So, Urdur is in a similar relationship to Vertha as sung or song is to sing. Urdur is not what is happening, but what has happened. Now, this is interesting because Urdur is the name of the norm that will be mentioned if none of the others are. Right? It is Urdur who seems to be the most prominent of the three norns, even though her name is the one associated most with the past. So this seems to be, if this implies anything, it seems to imply a sort of karmic sense of the of fate, because what happens to you is often built on what has already happened to you or on what you have already done. Notice that it's her name that appears in the name of the well of the Norns, Urdar Brunner, Urth's well. It's also her name that appears in Old English and other Old Germanic languages as the word for fate. Now, the cognate of Urdur in Old English is the word weird. And what I mean by cognate is that it comes from the same ancestor word in Proto-Germanic, the ancestor of both English and Norse. Now, weird is not a person in Old English. It is, a, just a, it is an impersonal fate, the same way that I might talk about fate in English today. If you read Beowulf, you'll see the word weird quite a bit. Uh, there are some famous quotes about it that are uh, great testimonials to the attitude toward fate of the old Germanic peoples in their literature. Gad a weird, so he uh, Weird always goes as it must. Or weird of nered, in fact ne er. A weird often saves a undue man von his elendag, if his courage holds. That's a quote that uh, is memorably used in the movie The Thirteenth Warrior. So 
Werther, it's her name that becomes the impersonal word for fate and other Germanic languages, and it's also the name that's going to be used if any three of the Norns are named, such as in the Well of the Norns, the Well of Urd. The third Norn is Skuld, and that name is actually exactly cognate with the English word should. Skuld is what ought to happen, right? What is owing. And so the Translations, you'll often see these names as, as present, Verlandi, past, Urdur, and future school really don't do justice to the uh, actual meaning in Old Norse, which is more like what is happening, what has happened, and what ought to happen. Now, whether there's actually some kind of specific role for each one of them associated with that is not clear because their daily lives are not discussed for us in any detail. Ilr ertomr norna. The Norn's decision is bad or evil. That's the last line of the ancient poetry preserved in the saga of Hadric and Herfor. And perhaps one of the reasons why the Norn's judgment seems so evil to us is that, as Orther's name suggests, it's just what we've done before coming back at us. For now, from the beautiful campus of the University of Colorado in Boulder, I'm wishing you all the best.